what's going on welcome back to the channel I'm gonna do a little haul video here about some old antique tools well, if you want to get into some old antique tools uh, stick around I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about some tools I don't I don't know everything about tools but I know enough to tell you what to look for so let's dive in let's go Depending how this video went, I have a cut clip or I uh, brought you right in. So, yeah, all right, we'll start right here. All right, so we got these two tools here. All right, I'm gonna slowly slow motion over here for a second. So, we got, uh, yeah, this. You know how I roll. It's, it's, it's always, it's always fun in the eBay store eBay store fun. So we have one, two, three, four. We have four, four totes slash bag. And uh, that's, these are the boxes that we're going to go through. Um, we're going to try and make this quick, but uh, you, you know, it's hard to get through all this stuff real quickly. So, but we are in a controlled environment. So I'll try to clip through the way so this first couple items going to show you and I'll pull out the items out of the one tote that I paid so that you have an idea of what I paid and what you can get out of it and stuff like that so um, this first tote of tools I'm going to show you I paid 240 okay so in that lot we got this Stanley number 110? No. It's a Stanley number 10. Okay. It's a Stanley number 10. Sweetheart. Now it's a sweetheart because when you look up these, first off, when you look up these, alright, usually the number's right here. Or right here in the back. Okay. Sometimes you can find the number here. Alright. And then if you want to know if it's a sweetheart edition, which is pretty much the higher end, you look right here on the blade. This is the blade that we're looking at. There's a heart, all right? This is for Stanley uh, planers. There's a heart right there in the center. It says SW. That's a sweetheart. So, this is a... Number 10, Carriage Maker Sweetheart, all right? And it's got the, uh, it's got a brass knob. It's another, it's another feature. So it's a Carriage Maker because of this uh, grooved out part here, I believe. And it's just a little narrower this way than a typical planer. Typical planer is maybe another half inch wider or a quarter inch wider than uh, number 10. Okay, so this is a good shape uh, carriage planer. I'll try to throw a comp right there for what I think I can get for this carriage planer. And uh, we might have to do some segments, all right, because I, I want you guys to learn rather than rifle through this. I don't want it to. I don't want to show you this just so I can show it to you. I want to show you this so you can find it and you can learn something from it. So, all carriage maker planers are desirable. People want them. They work. They're really good. So this is going to have no problem selling. Um, it's complete and it's uh, in really good shape. So. Whatever comp price I just put there. This planer, particularly if you can find it, this will sell within a week. If you, most likely. They get bit up all the time. All right. This I don't know a lot about because we don't know the maker because it's a Japanese planer. Import. 
Um, the Japanese make just as good quality planer, if not a little better, to a degree of woodworking tools. So when you see it that it's made in Japan, um, it's most likely pretty good. All right. So this is um, oh, it's like a mahogany, or like a, maybe like a taiga. I don't know. It's a nice wood though. So he has wood. It's a nice grain. Um, I don't have a hammer re off hand, but to take this blade out, you would need a hammer. You'd want to hammer that out. So. But this is the maker's mark for this, is that. Again, hard to look up because it's in Japanese. <laughs> okay. And then it's a 65 degree and you know, a 45 degree, I guess. Made in Japan. I don't know how that works, but that's what it says. This is the original box for it, so, um, honestly, I already got this sold, uh, I got a guy, I got a guy that, uh, only buys Japanese planers, alright, so, that's, that's, that's going to say that to him, alright, let's go on to the next couple items, okay, within that lot, we got this huge brown and sharp square all right big one it's a 540 Let's see if I can find the oh geez sorry guys all right brown and sharp manufacturing company providence number 540 comes with this huge um holder one-handed in there all right so it goes like that all right. this is within that lot so I just showed you where the numbers are located it's located on the bar stock of the square um, so I'm going to show you comp dad his comp dad right over here and that would be consist of having this stand which is pretty important because I mean come on now that displays great in your shop and um, you would most likely want that square to be rust free kind of like this kind of like gleaming in the light there and you could probably achieve that with some maybe three three thousand three thousand two thousand 3,000, 2,000 maybe sandpaper? I don't know. I would, th I would think that's a good n number to start with and slowly work your way up. You don't want to, you don't want to beat it up too bad. That way you have an idea of what sandpaper can, can get you there to where it can get here. You don't want to just go in there with like a 500 because you don't know. That's like, that's like painting something without test testing the paint first you want to test it out before you try to clean um clean a square like that see that you can clean that that you can get that shine and nice and uh you'll get more money out of it for sure if you can get it nice so all right this is a machinist tool it's not really a woodworker's tool but could be a woodworker's tool too. All right, let's go to, go to another tool. All right, this is everything else that was in this lot of consisting of two hundred and forty dollars. This is everything else. This is a Rob Sorby. It's a Sorby. Well, so I call it a Sorby. Uh, Robert Sorby. Sheffield, England. This is a two-inch Sorby for a 
wood lathe, or you could use this as a very, very abrasive um, chiseling tool. Um, obviously, it's massive. Um, try to put a comp ad there on the side. And uh, yeah, look out for that stuff. Big ones like that. Sheffield, England, Sorby. Um, there's some other, bunch of other makers. Tons of them that can bring good money. This is a good one. That's a good piece. Make some money on that. I think they call this a plunging tool for lathe work. So Molson, Molson Brothers. This is how you look them all up. Usually I make a mark on all the steel um, of a vintage chisel. Um, very nice tool there. It has a very hardy handle. Made well. It's, uh, I'm going to just toss out prices. And these are going to just be guesstimates on uh, some of these smaller tools. I might not have all the time to uh, crunch these numbers because some of this stuff's very hard to look up. But within I, this is probably thirty bucks. All right, that's what I would shoot for on that. Maybe a little more. Uh, spoke shave and a very primitive spoke shave. It's missing the original blade, but uh still could find one because that that blade size looks very typical to a um, vintage wood planer so that was probably versatile nice early primitive piece it's probably at least 10 bucks it's got two kinds of wood and it does have a maker mark looks like it's went worn out So there is some branding right here, but it's a little worn out to read. So it's hard to read, see? If the item's not clean, it's kind of hard to read. Sometimes when you take a camera to it, you can uh, see, you can kind of get a better idea of what it is. Alright, so we got a mark on there. Hirsch. This is obviously German. German chisel, this is a chisel. It's number 26. It's a 2 and a 6 with a deer. But these are just different little ways to look up the numbers, pretty much. And when you try to comp these out, you're not always going to get um, results. So, this is a Sorby chisel three-quarter inch or a 19 millimeter sorby nice little piece I'm missing the end there but I think yeah, I have that in the tote but Get a little glue on there that needs to get gone clean it up a little get a couple bucks for that for sure so some of these sorbies here can go for, you know, 10 to 20 bucks. And that's probably where we'll start. There's another uh, made in German. In Germany. MHG. Those are at least ten bucks each, right there. There's a couple more of these. Uh, what do we call them? Pick sticks. <laughs> these are uh, these are carbon steel. So these are hardened steel. See see how there's like some pitting going on there with that steel. This one this one has a little more pitting. It's 
see the pitting there. Right. It's a usually good sign that it's uh, high carbon. And uh, it might have a little... Like a little swirling... See that? It's almost like dirty looking, swirly ink blots, kind of. It's another... It's another good sign of uh, high quality steel. You get more money for that. Um, carbon prices are going way up, so. It's a little tri square here. Oh, focus. Missing uh, the rounded part, but that's probably 10. 10 bucks right there for that little setup right there. These are more like flea market prices, okay? Flea market, and if I was at like 30 or so, I don't know. If I, if I, I'm usually trying to give you flea market prices, and if it's eBay, I'll show you a comp to add. A couple nice little hammers. Uh, this one's probably a couple bucks. Two bucks, three bucks. This one's probably... Four or five bucks, maybe five bucks. And some nice uh, gouging tools. Three nice handled gouging tools. It's pretty cool. And a record chisel satchel. Chisel satchel. For record chisels. Um, this might be 10 or 20 bucks for sure. Somebody might need that. Or I could, you know, do the old something like this for the flea market. You know, put them in there, roll it out. Okay. So there's a pile right there for, uh, 240. Alright. And what didn't I show you? Oh, this nice tape dispenser. Kind of liked it. It's heavy duty and dookie. There's a. Yeah, I got out of there. It's a Scotch C22 heavy duty tape dispenser. Pretty cool. Alright, on to the next. Alright, here's some more uh, planar parts, alright. Paid 40 for all of this. Uh, and the money is pretty much in these couple planers here, and these couple machinist tools, but everything else is kind of grinded out. And yeah, 510, 215, whatever, make a pile. And there's a couple good planers in here, just not the greatest kind of tools, but I'm just going to kind of show you some parts that you can look for. Um, and if you could maybe make a pile like that for about 40, so it'd be about a buck a piece, maybe two bucks a piece. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This is 20, so about two bucks a piece. That's not too bad. I mean, that's a decent pile. So, I don't have all the numbers written down off bat, so I'm just going to kind of scan through these. And, um... Just kind of tell you what maybe they're worth, just by eye, you know, flea market situation. This little pile of stuff's maybe five bucks, ten bucks. With that, some pots, five for that pile, a couple bucks here and there, a couple bucks, three bucks each. This is what I would charge. Um, this one's probably five dollars. That looks like a user. If you can if you can use it you're at least at five um, without looking it up this is probably five or ten um, that could be five or ten too it's, it's a little worn um, this is uh, maybe five this is maybe five or ten this one's broken but it would have been a good one Miller Falls number 57 but it's good for parts that's a five 
the 605 board. Um, I don't think that's the correct term for that part, but that's a 605, so I don't know what that's worth. Uh, a number 12 Sergeant Company, some sort of clamp. Yeah, I don't know what that's worth either. I'm not sure what most of this is worth. I would just bring this to the flea market and rifle it off. But this Stanley number 70 is good. It does have a condition right here where it's broken. But definitely an interesting looking tool for the shelf. And you could use this. It's a user. Um, it's another number 78. You could definitely take some parts off of this one here and put it on there, or vice versa. Or sell all three in one lot so that you, the end user would have one nice user and they could pick which um, st stock they wanted to use. Just clamp. Those are always five or ten at the flea. Grab those for a couple bucks if you can find them. These are kind of interesting. It's a Jacob's dr drill chuck on a handle, which is stocked on there. This was definitely sold by some company. This is the number six. But... This guy paid eight, which he got a good deal. I would charge ten at least, maybe twenty on eBay, because it would sell. This one's a two B Jacobs on here, mark number six. I guess six would be the handle size, and uh, yeah, this is at least thirty bucks on eBay, maybe twenty at the flea. This guy got paid 15 for it so he probably got a deal on it I would sit on it because it's a good tool and uh because you can I mean you can do you can do everything with that you can put a drill bit on it you can put a screw tip on it you can do screws with it uh, you can drill with it you can do everything it's good it's a good multi-tool this is a 16n Remember J Jacob 16N with a Morse taper. I think that's a Morse taper. No, that's not a Morse. It's a, a tapered bit. It's just a tapered end. Right here. And that's the chuck. So I'll try to throw a cop there for that. Um, yeah, some of that stuff's pretty boring, but... When you find, you know, items like that within the lot, or um, a good, one good planer in there, it it makes it worth it. Because you can maybe sell that one good planer for a Hondo or something. You never know. Hondo, 50, 1,000, you never know. Alright, on to the next pile. I hope I give you some kind of information there. Not much, but we'll keep going. I did forget to give a little information about this wood, regular wood planer. Um, they don't do a lot of money. They don't do much at all. Uh, some people like them, some people don't. Um, some of them work, some of them don't. The only good thing about those is they can be like resurfaced and like made into a user again. They're not steel where, you know, but they do rot out. They do rot out, they do get, they can get moldy, they can get gross, but they're nice on the shelf, they're, they're more like a display in the workshop, alright, so you gotta kinda go on display price, five, ten bucks, um, take it away, please, I don't know, <laughs> that's how I'm usually with these 
wood planers, but they don't do well. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It just all depends who makes it. It really just all depends who made this. Because this could have been made by some guy in his backyard. All right. On to the next. All right, this next pile of stuff is was 80, okay? There was 49 items in this whole lot, so you can do the math on that. All right, let's go through some of these chisels. Most of these are all Sorbies, Rob Sorby. All Sorbies. These, these two are not. These three are not Sorby, but these other ones seem to be, this one looks Japanese. I don't know why, but it just does look Japanese. Mm, yeah, that's Japanese. You can usually tell Japanese, because it's always got some kind of, I don't know. Alright, see that? Japanese. I don't even have to look at the steel structure. Maybe a little bit, but. And then you got. I don't know why. It's, they use a round handle. Some guys use a, you know, a octagon handle. Whatever. So, yeah, a bunch of sorbies and a couple mixed. Yeah. Five bucks each. Five bucks each at least. This is made in Japan. Shinto. It's like a roughing, a rougher. With some kind of mechanism. Kind of interesting little tool. That's at least five bucks for sure. Uh, some kind of gagging tool. It's a measuring tool. Do measurements. It's got a beveled edge on it. And you can like lay it down in different ways to make angles. It's got this centered slot to get you the true different different measuring. This is a gauge, depth gauge, woodworker. It's actually pretty nice. Actually, I, I, I would think this is 50 bucks. Let's see if I can find it. It's a pin. I had the pin in there. So. I'll have to look in that tote. It was in this tote, so it should be in the tote. These are kind of interesting uh, roughing tools. Like hole rougher. I don't even know what this tool's called. Never actually seen one of these before, but... Definitely a nice tool. For sure, six bucks. He paid six for this. I would say at least five for sure. So, we got two of those. That's kind of cool. Got this Japanese crosscut saw. Was marked 40. Um, yeah, it's at least 20 bucks for sure. Get some other squares here. It's a good one. And you can tell that's quality. It's a quality build. It does have screws, but it's at least five bucks. Some of these vintage ones do better. This does have a. See, this is sometimes how faint the maker's marks are and you can see why your camera can benefit to reading some of it S 
Burago. E R A G O. See, so you'd think it was a C, but it's a G. Let me know. Five bucks. It's an interesting. Well, focus. Very interesting tool here. It's a rougher, just like this rougher. It's more of a vintage rougher. And this is another rougher. It's for doing some, like, some doing some barn work right here. Get them corners. This is actually really nice. This is probably worth 10 bucks. This is probably way overlooked item here that probably works really really good sometimes when they look really really sucky they are really really good it just looks corroded and awful and the handles all beat up and it's all roughed out but I bet you this just works for what it's supposed to do perfectly for ADS. All right. So that's kind of all that there. And this is the, the tote. I didn't want to pull it out. I figured I'd just dive in with some heat. So basically in here, it's a bunch of hand files here. And I've gone over hand files. If you... Nah, I didn't really do like much of a video on hand files, but I did sell some hand files uh, a, a week ago, maybe two, two or three weeks ago. It was a pile of them about this big, but they were all Swiss. I think they were Swiss files. We sold them for two twenty-five. So you want to look out for the files, so they can. It can be worth a lot of money. Yeah, two hundred and twenty-five dollars, not two hundred and twenty-five cents. So this guy was buying his, obviously at a swap shop, and he paid probably close to ten for this. All right, just for that. All right. There's a couple other ones that are marked that he was buying he bought this for eight dollars right here this file right here sometimes when more woodworkers want what they want they'll they'll buy um, these handles that go to these files do at least two or three bucks each because it just makes this uh, file a lot easier to use with this handle so a lot of the guys that use the files, they really want the handles too. So this is a detachable handle. Ugh, did I say that right? Maybe. Detachable handle. Detachable handle. That's what that is. They make some other ones with a screw. Focus. They make some other ones with a screw and yada yada yada. Some other ones here that you just hammer them in. Or you would drill your adequate hole. Alright. So. Um, when I go to the flea market. I don't sell these for what this guy paid. I usually would sell this for. This one. Uh, I mean. I'd be hard pressed to get five at my flea market. I would say four. Four bucks. Three bucks. Two bucks and two bucks. I mean, I'd like to get five for that, but it's such a haggle over that dollar that I would just say four. And if they tried haggling me, I'd probably just tell them to piss off. So it's just the easier route. Um, sometimes you gotta. Let me turn the camera. Alright. So when you're at the flea market, 
whatever you do when you go to your flea market to buy stuff, it goes in the same effect when you go there to sell the stuff. So you have to understand the negotiation processes of how you sell your stuff it should be the same as how you buy stuff. You gotta handle it almost the same way because if you're a dick, then it's gonna be kinda of tough for you. And I only know this because I'm grumpy. I'm grumpy in the morning. And um, everyone knows that. <laughs> Sip for grumpiness. All right. So, yeah, I'm grumpy in the morning. So everyone knows not to, when I show up at 530, they know not to come near my car. <laughs> they know to come back at 7 when I have everything all set up and I'm sitting in my chair. All right. That's when they know. All right, we'll go back. So I'm just saying that because you don't want to beat the people up too bad because it might turn back on you when you go to set up at your flea market or you sell at your yard sale or yada 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 and everyone's beating up on you so I've learned that over the years that it don't pay to do that so keep that in mind and the last thing you want to do alright this is the last thing you want to do when you come up to a guy that's selling tools okay and they have their top set down and they're selling their stuff at the flea market. Never do this, okay? How much is that? How much is this? <laughs> How much is this? Never do that. You do that? The fists are coming. No guy likes their stuff kicked, alright? I don't care if it's a dollar if it's worth a dollar first off it's their dollar and that's their stuff all right don't be kicking people's stuff that's just rude and it, it gets it gets people angry and gets them upset that's just my word of advice for um trying to buy stuff that's on a tarp i know it's difficult because you don't want to bend down and be like how much is this you want to just be like, how much is this? But they don't like that. <laughs> Glad I got that covered on this video. I only covered that because flea market season's coming up and I want you guys to change your ways, all right? All right. Let's carry on. Let's carry on with more of this video, okay? Let me uh, cut clip and I'll show you the the last bag all right okay here's the last here's the last pile so looking at this pile i paid 80 for this so there's actually 80 items in this pile so it's a dollar each all right now looking at this pile you'd be like there's some screwdrivers in here, there's some chisels, there's some other stuff that you think would not do well as woodworking tools, but you want to take the good with the bad, alright? And then this is the reason why I say you want to take the good with the bad, because some of the bad can be good, alright? So let's say you took all the chisels and you didn't take the screwdrivers, all right? I've showed you these before. Um, the old Irwin driver. It's a nice Irwin driver. And right off the cuff, this is this is probably ten dollar screwdriver right here. Uh, just because this is this is the one screwdriver everyone's collecting right now, so. You would have missed ten dollars right off the bat. All right, by not taking the bad. But then, no, oh, you didn't take the bad. You only grabbed the chisels. This is a nice number four chuck tightener. Um, it's at least three dollars. So it's 
in good shape too. So you would have missed another three dollars. All right. Then you would have missed all the stuff that you could have ground out for a dollar to get back some of your eighty, like that big, like this big chisel bit. Like that's at least a dollar. Or this chisel bit. Or that one. Or this part. Sometimes you might think, oh, I don't want to grind that stuff out. But um, when you go to the flea market, it's just, it's just another item to grind. Because you're grinding anyway. So, another item is just another item. So if you're already grinding, you might as well just grind more, you know. Um, you would have missed this utility knife. Yeah, you switch that blade around, you get a brand new box cutter for the, uh, for the store, you know, stick it right there, yeah, new box cutter for the store, boom, um, and then you might not have knew which ones were the good ones, and which ones were the bad ones, alright, that one's, that one's pretty good, Sheffield, The England one, marples. In England, so you might not have all the time to look up each one. I can't read that one. Looks like it said Hall. Um, here you go. Here's a. You'd be like, oh, that thing's, that thing's bad. Like, look at that. That's bad. That's not usable. Well, you could always rehandle it. And this is actually, uh, if you watch the whole video, you might know what kind of steel this is. It's high carbon steel, so that's what it's worth. It's worth like three. It's not a pound, but that's probably like two dollars in scrap. <laughs> two dollars in scrap steel right there. And that's what it would look like. Pitted. Pitted but pitted but still looking good. It's got a little chip there, but um it's hardened so you can you can refile this down with the files that are in there. Refile it down, and then you have a brand new tool. That's how they did it. They didn't throw stuff away back then, like we do now. They just fixed it. See how this one's. That one's been resharpened. Well, the value goes down a little when it's resharpened, too. Um, but it's still got a good edge on it, and someone could use it right now. So, but, like, all these different little factors weigh. All these factors weigh into each individual tool. And keep in mind that I buy the good and the bad because. Each individual chisel has a each individual job, so it's good to have more than less. Um, yeah. So if we did, so there's 80 items, and if we did three bucks on the chisels each, just like dry numbers, like three bucks each, um, should push 200 and something dollars, $220 out of that pile, and I didn't look any of them up, some of them could be 20 bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, this could be 10, 10, 20, you know, 20, 20, 10, and you get 100, and then the rest, something like that, all right, that's how you want to do it, hope that didn't take too long.
All right, so I gave you what I could, all right? <laughs> so I gave you a haul and I tried to give you some information the most I could. Um, if you want to come back, that's on. That's up to you. Flea market's coming, and uh, everything's going to the flea. We're bringing everything. We're going to bring everything except for the store that's listed currently. I'll float everything at the flea as we bring it back. Before we load it into the van from the flea, we decide what goes back into the store to be listed. And then we will distinguish the pile for that to be um, re reevaluated in house here to keep the rotation as much as I can. That way it keeps my um, 600 listed, you know, in that area. And I do want to get back up to 700 because the store does way, way, much, way more volume at 700 listed. So, got to get back up to seven or 800 listed. And, uh, yeah. Keep picking. Peace. <laughs> Come by. Come back. Later.